Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 On a beautiful day. I think it's a beautiful day outside. It's cold. Yeah, it's cold. But I love it. And it's beautiful. The sun is shining. And God is on his throne. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I love that song. I love to tell the story. My favorite my favorite verse is, I love to tell the story for those who know it best, seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. Praise the Lord. And I'm, the sermon today is going to be proof of that. You've all heard all of this. We're going to talk about Jesus this morning. Who is Jesus? But it is the old, old story. It is about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I tell you what, I never tire of hearing about the Lord Jesus Christ and all his glory and his goodness and his love and his mercy. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now, if you've got your Bibles, and I hope you do, <coughs> turn to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to begin at verse 13. And may God be with us today and enliven us and give us strength and joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others, Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ means the anointed one, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Let us pray. O Father in heaven, thank you so much for your goodness to us, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. So undeserved, but yet we love and are so thankful for it. We love you so much and thank you for all you do for us, all the goodness, life, happiness, health, provision. Lord, we thank you for everything that you provide. Your word says every good and perfect gift comes from above, and we thank you for every one of them. Oh, Lord, if we were to stand here and count our blessings, we wouldn't have the time. Thank you so much. And now, Lord, as we go forward with the service, I pray, Lord, that you would be our speaker this morning. We don't need to hear from Pastor Kimball. We need to hear from you by your precious Holy Spirit. And that is my prayer today. Lord, push me out of the way and bring forth your word, your light, your joy, your peace. Amen, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Give us all eyes to see and ears to hear what you are telling us this morning, your people. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I was in England one time. I was preaching at a gathering over there. And it was one of those off times. And I was in a, a separate room. And they, had to have, they, they happened to have the television on. And it was a news broadcast. And there was an American, it was a story about an American entertainer. He was a gospel singer. And he was over there in England. A Christian entertainer, I guess I should call him. So he was uh, in England. And there were thousands of people gathered together to hear this guy. And uh, they had a report. There was a video report. There were some cameras in the, the audience that night. And they, were, they had a little story. And they said that this was, I won't name him, but that showed on the stage, he was prancing around. And there were other people choreographed, kind of prancing around. And it was kind of like, it reminded me of that old song from down in the south, that, that uh, Negro folk song, uh, Jump Down, Spin Around, Pick a Bell Cotton. Yeah. It was one of those. 
And so, and what was the man saying? He was singing, he was singing like this. Who's in the house? And all the crowd said, JC! Who's in the house? JC! And the, the commentator, the news commentator, wondered, he didn't criticize, he just wondered what it had to do with Christianity. And I did too. I remember thinking that, and I remember thinking I was proud of him for asking the question, what does this have to do with Christianity? They wouldn't refer to Jesus. They were talking about Jesus Christ, J.C. But they made the whole thing to be kind of a, I don't know, to me it just cheapened everything. It just cheapened everything. Brought it down to a low level. I'm telling you, my friends, Jesus Christ is more to me than J.C. And when I refer to him and I, and I speak to him, I don't say, yo. I approach him like he is who he is. The Lord and Master of all time and eternity. Amen? Amen. The Creator. My Savior. Amen. Yeah. We, we should be able to feel like He is our friend. Amen? Yes, indeed. Yes. I'm not saying anything about that. He is our friend. And we should be able to approach Him with confidence and not be terrified that He's going to kill us because He has opened up the doors. But at the same time, he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen. He is the Creator. He is God in the flesh. Amen. He came down and gave his life for you and for me. Thank you, Lord. And rose again in triumph and in victory. He is more than JC or Yo Bro. Amen. All right, we got that straight? <laughs> There has been no other figure in all of history that has been more controversial or more divisive or more influential among the sons of men than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And today we will explore the burning question that Jesus asked his disciples that day, Who is Jesus? Who do you say that he is? Get ready if you're taking notes because we're going to be going through all the Bible. Just about. And I hope I have the time for it. As I've stated, my ministry has been and always shall be based on the promise or the premise that the Holy Bible is the word of Almighty God. It's the perfect word of God. I believe that. And I believe that to understand who Jesus is, we have no better source and no more practical source for doing so than the word of God. We can go by our own experience. Yes, we can do that. We can go by historical records. If there's a record, a historical record of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes, if it's true. I'm telling you, though, if it doesn't match the Word of God, it's not authentic. Amen. And don't believe it. The Word of God is reliable. Amen? Amen? We believe that. If it's not, we have no basis, no foundation for our faith. If the Holy Bible cannot be trusted, we, we are building our lives upon sand, and our lives will fall apart. But if God's Word is indeed that, God's Word, and we build our life on His Word, we are building our life on the rock. Amen. Amen. Who is Jesus? Today it's all going to be about Jesus. Amen? Amen. All about Jesus. Way it ought to be. Way church ought to be. Amen? Amen. Right. It's a lot of peripheral issues, and they're all important, I suppose, but Jesus Christ is the most important. Amen. You can know all about the migrations, you can know all about the genealogies, you can know all about all of that, but if you don't have Jesus, you've got nothing. Amen. So let's get to basics. Jesus, who is he? He's the creator God. In John chapter 1, now, I have to apologize ahead of time. If I'm going to get through this, I need to be running through this quickly, okay? So I'm apologizing ahead of time, but I will tell you every verse that I'm reading, and hopefully you'll get there before I go on to the next one. <laughs> John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1, we read it earlier this morning. Jesus is the Creator. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the light was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power, power, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That is describing our Lord Jesus Christ. He was in the beginning with God. There was nothing made that was not made by him and through him. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's always been there. Yes, he was born in the manger, but he pre-existed that manger. He was there in the beginning when all things were created. He is creator God. And he is the sustainer of all things. Colossians chapter 1, beginning at verse 16. For by him, Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist or hold together. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, for it pleased the Father, that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or in heaven. In Jesus Christ, all things consist. He holds everything together. Yeah. I'll never forget that, that presentation and the man brought up the, the little thing, that, that little microscope, very, 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 very small, but I'm not coming up with the right word, but the very, very small microscopic thing that holds all things together is called laminin. And if you look at it, a, a diagram of laminin in, you just look it up online, Google it, laminin. That thing that holds everything together, it's the glue that holds creation together. Yeah. It's in the shape of a cross. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the sustainer of all things. Everything was created by him and for him, his own purposes. He is mighty. He is majestic. He is all-powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. Without him we can do nothing. John chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. Going to verse 5, he said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that, it, that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it may bring forth more fruit. Amen. Sometimes we wonder why we, we, we have problems. What's going on, Lord? I thought I was being good. What's going on? When he's purging us, the, the branches that bear fruit, he purges. So that we'll bear more fruit. It's not a punishment. Where was I? Verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me, Jesus. 
Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth fruit, much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Nothing. He possesses all power. Matthew chapter 28. Our Lord Jesus possesses all power. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. John chapter 5, Beginning at verse 21 and going down to verse 29, John 5, 21 through 29. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, gives them life, even so the Son quickeneth or maketh alive whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, Jesus. That all men should honor the Son, Jesus, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming into which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, and they have that have done they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. He is all powerful. Amen. He is the judge. He's the creator God. He is the sustainer of all things. He is the judge. Amen. And he is the healer. Luke chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6, 17 to 19 says, And he came down with them and stood in the plain in the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. A great, great group of people. And they, were, they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him. But there went virtue out of him and healed them all. 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 Matthew chapter 10 verses, sorry, Matthew chapter 12 verses 10 to 15. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, they asked Jesus, people around him. Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? They asked him that, that they might accuse him. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Amen? Wherefore is it lawful to do well on the Sabbath days? Then saith he to the man, he was talking to the people that were accusing him, and he looked to the man that needed healing, and he said, Stretch forth thine hand. Now what did I say before? You do what Jesus tells you to do, there will be success. Amen. He stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. Why? Because he healed a man on the Sabbath day. Uh. 
But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. He didn't heal just one man on the Sabbath, he healed them all. These little puny people trying to tell the Lord and create, Lord and Master of all creation what to do. Accusing him. Who do they think they are? He is the healer. He's the Lord and Master. He's judge. He's creator God. He's the sustainer of all things. And he is our provider. Thank God. Philippians 4, 19 says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. How? By Christ Jesus. Say it. By Christ Jesus. Christ. That's how he provides for us. By Christ Jesus. Yeah. All your need. Not all your want. All your need. I have a testament, testimony to that. My wife and my family, we're a testimony to that. I'm a preacher. I live off of donations. I have no other job. My wife is a homemaker. We've got all these children. There's no way that we should even be able to feed our, our family. But we do. Praise God. Amen. He's always been with me. He's always been with me. And it's, I'm not, I don't want to toot my own horn. I'm just saying he's always been with me. It's not me. It's him. Amen. He's Amen. faithful. He's faithful. Psalm chapter 23, beginning in verse 1. Say it with me. We all know it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> Going to be in the king's house forever. Amen. Why? Because of Jesus. Who's the king? Jesus. He's invited us. Yes. And he's paid the price. Yes. He has given us wedding garments. They're his. Yes. And if we just wear that wedding garment that he provided, we're in. Amen. And we're going to stay in how long? Forever. Are we having a good time this morning talking about Jesus? Are you with me? Alright, well, there's still a ways to go. He is our healer. He's our protector. He's our, our oops, I, I skipped. I jumped ahead of myself. <laughs> he is our protector. In John chapter 10, verse 27 to 30, he said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I said, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. <laughs> my Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And I and my Father are one. In fact, in Isaiah, Jesus is called the everlasting Father. Amen. Amen. He is also the liberator. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Are you enjoying talking about Jesus? Come unto me, all ye that labor. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's the liberator. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Why is 
the burden light. Sometimes if you feel like the burden is heavy, it's because you're not doing something right. Just let go and let God. Amen? Amen. There's, there's been times when I, I, we all do it. We've all gone through this. There's something going on in our life that seems very, very big. We forget the big picture, and we forget to trust Him. My brother and my sister, dear, let us trust Him because His yoke is easy Amen. and His burden is light. Cast all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you, the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 4, verse 14 to 21. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit up to Galilee, and there went out a there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And rightly so, amen. amen. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down and all eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. I imagine there was a great hush. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears God. Romans chapter 7, verse 14, and then on down to 8, verse 2. He is the great liberator. You know, we all have a struggle, and that is, we love the law of God in our hearts, but our flesh wants to do other things. Our flesh wants to do things that have got to be doing. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now that it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have the victory, my friends. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. We've all messed up. We all do things we don't want to do because we know it's wrong. It's that flesh, that filthy, stinking, rotten flesh. Amen. You take the spirit out of the flesh and it's just a matter of days before you smell.
smell what flesh really is. But there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free. Free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you still with me? Yes. Are you still loving Jesus this morning? Amen. He is the creator God. He is the sustainer of all. He is the judge and lawgiver. He is the healer. He's the protector. And he is the provider. And he is the redeemer of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. What was lost? Matthew 15, 24. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Word of God. Amen. 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 Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 to 7. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go round into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. 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 He is our righteousness. Jeremiah 23, 6 says, In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. It's talking about Jesus. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Amen. He is our righteousness. Thank God. Amen. I am not righteous except in him. None of us do. Praise God. He is all. And in all. Romans chapter 11, verse 32 to 36. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of them. I read this at Sarah's funeral, my daughter's funeral. I read this. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord and who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah! Romans chapter 14, verse 11, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11, Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Years ago, there was a colleague in ministry that I knew. His name was Eric. Eric told me of a dream that he had one night. He didn't know if it was a dream or a vision. And I know that feeling because I, I've had those. And he said, I, I dreamt or I saw, whatever it was, I saw scriptures. You know, like you would see a scripture written out in Luke, John 3, 16, or Luke 10, 11, whatever, just written out. He saw it just float by his face, and then another, and then another, and another, and all of a sudden there were scriptures just floating around everywhere, and they began to swirl and form the shape of a man, and his arm 
arms were outstretched. And he knew that that vision was telling him that the entire word of God is Jesus. It's about Jesus. He is called the word of God. That's one of his appellations. He is called the name, the, the word of God. Amen. Our, the entire Bible is about the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm chapter 40, verse 7 said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. On the road to Emmaus, we read that in Luke chapter 24, verse 27, he was on the road to Emmaus, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, Jesus expounded unto them all the scriptures concerning himself. John chapter 5, verse 39, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. The whole Bible is about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's in every book of the Bible. In Genesis, he's the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb, the manna from heaven, the rock that brought forth streams of water in the desert, the tabernacle in the wilderness. In Leviticus, he is our high priest and all the sacrifices and offerings found in the book of Leviticus. He is every feast of Israel. In Numbers, he is the cloud and the fire by night. And he is also the brazen serpent they looked unto and were healed. Amen. In Deuteronomy, he is the prophet like unto Moses and our city of refuge. Thank you, Lord. In Joshua, he is the captain of our salvation and the commander of the Lord's army. He is the one who, lead, who leads us into the promised land. He is the one who brings down the walls that keep us from God's blessings. In Judges, he is the judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he is our kinsman, redeemer. In Samuel, he is the prophet of the Lord Most High. In Kings, he is the king of Israel, the bread that is multiplied to meet our every need, the waters of the Jordan that cleanses every stain. In Chronicles, he is the son of David who reigns eternally. In Ezra, he is the faithful scribe. In Nehemiah, he is the rebuilder of the broken down walls of empty religion. In Esther, he is our Mordecai and protector of God's people. In Job, he is the day spring from on high. In Psalms, he is the Lord, our shepherd, our song in the night, the stone which the builders rejected, the word that is the light unto our path. In Proverbs, he is wisdom. In Ecclesiastes, he is wisdom. In Song of Solomon, he is the lover of my soul. In Isaiah, he is the despised and rejected Savior. He is God with us. He is wonderful counselor. He is mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In Jeremiah, he is the righteous branch. In Lamentation, he is the weeping, the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he is the wonderful four-faced man and the wheel within the wheel. In Daniel, he is the fourth man in the fiery furnace. In Hosea, he is the faithful husband, forever married to the backslider. In Joel, he is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. In Amos, he is our burden bearer. In Obadiah, he is the Lord, mighty to save. He is, in Jonah, he is the forgiving God and the great missionary. In Micah, he is the messenger with beautiful feet and the Messiah born in Bethlehem whose goings forth have been from everlasting. In Nahum, he is the avenger of God's elect. In Habakkuk, he is the great evangelist crying for revival. In Zephaniah, he is the restorer of God's lost heritage. Amen. In Haggai, he is the cleansing fountain. In Zechariah, he is the pierced sun and the fountain opened up in the house of David for sin and uncleanness. In Malachi, he is the son of righteousness, risen with healing in his ways. In Matthew, he is the Messiah. In Mark, he is the miracle worker. In Luke, he is the son of man and the horn of salvation and the consolation of Israel. In John, he is the only begotten son of God. The Lamb of God, the bread of life, the light of the world, the great I Am, the door of the sheep. He is the good shepherd. He is the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life, the true vine. In Acts, he is the ascended Lord, and, and he is also the judge.
judge of the living and the dead, the just one, the hope of Israel. In Romans, he is the justifier, the rock of offense, the Lord of the dead and of the living, the root of Jesse. In Corinthians, he is the last Adam, the gifts of the Spirit. He is all of the gifts of the Spirit. In Galatians, he is the one who sets us free. In Ephesians, he is the Christ of riches. He is the head of the church, the chief cornerstone. In Philippians, he is the God who is our joy and meets our every need. In Colossians, he is the fullness of the Godhead. In Colossians, he is also the very image of the invisible God, the hope of glory. In Thessalonians, he is our soon coming king. Amen. Our soon coming king. In Timothy, he is the only mediator between God and man. In Titus, he is the blessed hope and our great God and Savior. In Philemon, he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. In Hebrews, he is the heir of all things, our great high priest, the author and finisher of our faith. And in James, he is the great physician and the Lord of glory. In Peter, he is the living stone and the chief shepherd. In John's epistles, he is everlasting love. In Jude, he is the only wise God and our Savior. In Revelation, he is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the conquering lion of Judah, the word of God, the bright and morning star, King of kings and Lord of lords. He is all of us and so much more. He is King of kings, Lord of lords, the ever-living one, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end and everything in between. He is all and in all, and he ever liveth to make intercession on behalf of his people before the Father. He is coming again also, and his reward is with him. Hallelujah. He is to me. He is my Lord. He is my God. He's my King. He's my friend. He's my example. He's my Savior. He's my love, my life, my all. He is my reason to live and my blessed hope. He is the one I most sincerely wish to please. And he is the one I am most ashamed to see what I truly am without his grace. He is the only one who truly matters in the end. And my fallen years, my fallen years long for with great anticipation those sweet words so undeserved. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Those words will indeed be music to my ears, but, I, but in my heart I will know that it is only because of him that I, by faith, will hear those words on that glorious and happy day. And when in scenes of glory the redeemed cast their crowns at the feet of the only one, the only one who is worthy of them, I will at once both quickly and joyfully do likewise, and will shout with the thunderous chorus of the redeemed, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, O Lord. O blessed and happy day, O worship him now with me. O my Lord and my God, O I love you, Lord Jesus. Throughout eternity he will be praised and worshipped, we read in Revelation chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written, and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud, loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to even look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open up and read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the spirits of God sent forth into all the earth, sorry, 
And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of my right hand, uh, out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which was in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such as are in, and such as are in the sea and all that there are them, are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped at him, worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 4. After this I looked, and behold, the door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard it as it were a trumpeter, a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, the throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne, and he that sat up was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty elders, and upon the seats, I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts, full of eyes, before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. These were the standards of Israel. And the four beasts which had them, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. They rest not day and night saying that. Imagine that. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne and who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen. Amen. One last verse, one last scripture reading here. Revelation chapter 19. Have you... Have you been with her? Are you still with her? Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 19, beginning at verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, many crowns. Because he, we had all cast our crowns at his feet. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his
his name is called, read it with me, the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's the Jesus I serve. Amen. Amen. Do you serve him today? Yes. I hope so. Now the musicians can come forward and we can have a closing song. 